The necromancer Kira Wraith has made an illegal deal with a reaper, a piece of her soul in exchange for the resurrection of her overdose twin brother. When her fiancé betrays her deal to the Necromancer Guild, she's sent away to serve the Pyre Dynasty, the ruling vampire kingdom that forces humankind to become feed on their 47th birthdays. Arriving at the Pyre Palace just in time for a sinister courtship competition, Kira is tasked with necromancing the three vampire princes' bloody messes. When one of the handmaids Kira befriends dies in the competition's crossfires, she finds herself needing to sell another piece of her soul to the Reaper. With two of the six pieces of her soul already bargained away, Kira finds herself giving in to the few instincts that remain. Instincts she'd normally be able to keep at bay. Instincts that lead her right to the vampire princes she loathes. Amidst lust and lethality, members of the Pyre Court start mysteriously dying, and Kira is faced with a choice sell the rest of her soul to resurrect the very creatures that terrorize her people, or risk her lands falling into the hands of an even darker power, only kept at bay by the vampires she despises. Funeral for a Foe is an adult fantasy romance, blah 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 blah. Hey everyone, so what I just read out there is the query, very very rough query, to a new project that I'm working on. I originally thought that I was going to try and traditionally publish it, but I think my school of thought is now I want to publish it as smaller novels in kind of an episodic fashion, like self-publish it, but I'm still trying to figure all that out. Right now all I know is that this project, Funeral for a Foe, working title, um, really excites me. I actually started this back in March or April. I was on uh, a little bit of a writing retreat with a friend of mine and the words just like came out. Like they just flowed right out for two days in two days, like pretty much actually just a day and a half, like an evening and the next day, I wrote about 14,000 words and I honestly haven't looked at it or touched it since. So it is a fresh project. Now I know I still have All the Queen's Renegades, which is the second book in my, oh, I've got it right here, which is the second book in my series High Wings. And this is All the King's Traitors, book number one. And I know I still have the second book and I keep delaying and delaying and delaying the second book, which is unfair. It, it really stresses me out. And I think maybe working on this project will help me go back and look at that project with a pair of fresh eyes. I don't know, I, I just keep delaying and delaying that project and maybe it's because my heart's just not in it right now. It was in it when I wrote it. Um, and, and anyway, I have to find a way to get my heart back into it so I can get that book out because I really want to get that book out and it's so close to the finish line. I just, I don't know, maybe I'm self-conscious about it. I am not sure. I'm not sure what it is. It's the same problem I've been having for two years and it's not an excuse. It sucks that the book's not out and I'm I'm sorry to any of my readers who are looking forward to that book, but it is coming. I promise the second book in the series is coming. And and when it does come, I really want to be excited about it. And anyway, it's just interesting to think back on this book actually because I kind of had the same feeling when I released this book that I was almost tired of it by the end and rereading this book because I've reread it many many times working on the second book um it's a great book but I think the problem is is when I work on a project over and over and over for so long and maybe some writers can relate you can no longer tell what is good and what is not good and it and that's kind of frustrating because you know all the twists and turns you know how it's going to end you know what's in the book I also have a notorious habit of every time I edit one of my books I change things like even once I'm at the proofreading stage. So I was working on all the Queen's Renegades and I probably added another like 15,000 words to it. And I was like, this is supposed to be going to proofreading and I'm just adding shit. Like it doesn't, anyway, it doesn't make sense. So all of that to say, I'm lost on this series. I am truly lost on this series. So I guess I'm excited about starting this new series and I figured maybe that'll help reignite my passion for writing, I suppose. So Funeral for a Foe, like I said, I started in March slash April. The reason I started with a query was because I watched a really interesting video like months ago 
months ago, years ago, that said, start with, start your story by writing the pitch for it. So you know, kind of the like meat and bones of what the story is going to be. And I did not do that for this book. And so then once I was done the book, I had to find, okay, like, what's my pitch? And with Funeral for a Foe, it was really easy to find my pitch. And while things have changed from the query already in that first 14,000 words, like it's not really three vampire princes anymore. That's changed a little bit. It's not a handmaid that dies. That's changed a little bit. But the essential kind of storyline that a necromancer keeps selling pieces of her soul or keeps bargaining pieces of her soul away to save the people she loves is, is still there. It's still intact. And so it was really interesting getting to start with the query because I know exactly what kind of the, at, at the soul, at the core of it, I know what the story is about. So we're working on in this vlog series, A Funeral for a Foe. And I, like I said, I'm not really 100% sure the publishing route I'm gonna take yet. I'm leaning towards self-publishing because I think this story will lend really well to um, one, the, the like Kindle Unlimited romance readers. Um, so I think that there's a really good market for it there. And I also think that it would do really well in kind of shorter novels. So maybe like 40,000 to 50, 60,000 words and then releasing them a little bit quicker. It was going to be one long epic novel that would probably be longer than this because it's an adult fantasy and this is, YA slash adult, it could be both. Um, so it was going to be quite a long novel. And just based on where I'm at now, <laughs> it's going to be quite a long novel. So I think breaking it up into into smaller, like more episodic novels could be really interesting. But again, I'm unsure. Um, and I haven't touched this project since March or April. So what we're going to do today is we're actually just going to go back and reread it and see what the heck is going on, what I like, what I don't like, maybe change some things. And yeah, that is going to be the bulk of this starting a new project writing vlog. So come along on the journey. I know I'm going through a bit of a writing existential crisis right now when it comes to when it comes to my high wings like this series. So hopefully what will happen is something will click working on this new project and then I will be starting to be okay with the second book for this. I am aiming to have the second book for this out in September but I was trying for July and that failed. And I just, I don't want to make any promises because I don't want to fail again. Cause I don't want to disappoint my readers and I've been disappointing my readers. So I'm anyway, really trying to get my shit together on this series. But anyway, that was my little bit of an existential crisis. But today we are working on Funeral for a Foe, which is an adult fantasy romance, an adult like epic fantasy romance. Um, it is spicy, so that's kind of fun. I've only written like spicy fan fiction before, so it's kind of fun to write that in original fiction. Um, even though I haven't gotten to the spicy part yet, I've been like, but I know what's gonna happen, so that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going well so far. Oh, and also the girl's name is Kira and in the, <laughs> the query letter, it's not her name anymore. I opened the file and I was like, oh shit, I changed her name. It is not her name anymore. Uh, but yeah, that's what, that's what happens when you write the query letter first and then you jump into writing. So I guess here we go. I'm gonna take you guys along on the journey and I hope you enjoy. So that is my starting word count. I do not remember anything I wrote, so we're gonna go back and see what the heck is in the story. So I just finished reading chapter one. Um, it was good, it was good. I very obviously just word vomited onto the page, but it was good word vomit and the story is definitely interesting. I totally forgot that I wrote this in first person and I never write in first person. So 
that's interesting. Um, I normally write in third person, like third person limited, and this is in first person, past tense. And so that's something I'm going to have to get used to again, because I've been working on um, the High Wing series. So like all the Queen's Renegades, my second book in the High Wing series, in third person limited for the past, like over the summer. So this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have to jump back into first person. I forgot I decided to do that. Um, we're gonna see how that goes. I'm not used to not used to writing in first person. But I think what we're going to do actually for chapter two is, I have a basement apartment. So I think we're going to go outside to do the next chapter. So I'm thinking I might not get through all of it today because it is now 13,700 words. It was 13,600 words, but I am like rewriting it and I don't know if I have the time to edit 13,000 words today. So I am currently at, let me just see here. I'm halfway. I'm at 7,000 words. 7,548 words of the Oh, that is less than halfway. No, that is halfway. Yeah, it's halfway. I'm halfway. I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get done today because I do have like work I have to do. Like I, my primary source of income is, is book cover design and also some consulting I do. So I can't just do this all day. I've already been at this for mm, three hours, four hours. I've taken a lot of breaks to like eat lunch and stuff like that, but I've already, and vlog. Um, but I've already been at this like basically since noon, actually earlier because I was working on this in the cafe this morning or at least rereading my query letter. Okay, well, I've been at this for a while and I didn't realize how ambitious it would be to, I guess, go through 14, 000, almost 14,000 words in a day, um, especially because I can't help but edit. I can't help but edit. So we'll keep going for a little longer. I think I might try and find some writing sprints on YouTube to help keep me motivated, but like I've got other work to do. <laughs> Bring you a little closer. Okay, so I am lying down. I am very cozy right now. It is about 4.30. Um, I spent the last half hour just kind of finishing up some loose ends. And I think I need to backtrack a little bit. So I was rereading the first chapter and a half. I haven't gotten through chapter two. I wrote long chapters apparently, which is so unlike me. Chapter one was like five to 6,000 words. Um, like so unlike me. And I realized one of my biggest weaknesses, well, I didn't realize it here, but I know one of my big biggest weaknesses writing is my characters and my character development and just the character arcs in general. And because this is a romance, there's a lot of focus on characters in this novel, obviously. So that made me think, and because I didn't recognize any of the characters because I really, like I pants this, I word vomited it and I pants it like right off the top of my head. So I don't know my characters. I feel like I don't know my characters. So I think I'm gonna go back and do character profiles. And I think I'm going to create a little bit of a world building document. So that'll probably be vlog two. Vlog two will be, you know, creating those character profiles and the world building elements and I feel like you know it's backtracking because I already have about 14,000 words written but I don't know it's been so long I don't know the characters and I don't know the world and I feel like writing character profiles not necessarily with like their physical attributes I mean I'm going to include that too but but not just with their physical attributes, with what their like wants are, what their likes are, what their dislikes are, what their ambitions are, what their um, conflict is going to be in the novel. 
so that I have a better idea of that going into the book because I know characters are my weakness and I always write books with really large casts of characters like there's a bunch of characters all the king's traitors has a whole it's got six points of view this book only has one point of view but there's a lot of characters like there's I forgot that like the main character has a whole crew that she's a part of and all of those people have unique stories that I want to tell and they're unique individuals so I need to be able to reflect that in my writing and one of the one of the really interesting suggestions that my editor on all the king's traders gave me and i'm going to do it for this novel and i forget the exact numbers but she was like write down 15 things each character says that other people can say but it's like a common phrase that they say then write down 10 things that they were are only going to say throughout the novel and then write down like three words that are entirely unique to them so like the five things for example would be like sayings that they would say that are pretty unique to them but then three words for each character that only those characters will ever use like they won't be used anywhere else in the book again i'm making these numbers up but but basically by doing that you create a unique voice for your character so there's like common phrases that they say that could be said by others but you know they say it a lot then there's phrases that are unique to them and then there are words that are unique to them but to the point that they're not ever used anywhere else and i thought that was a really interesting way to give each character a unique voice because i struggle with that um, I struggle, you know, with creating character arcs and I struggle with making sure each character has their own unique voice and perspective and that they don't all just get jumbled up, um, especially for characters like I, I the main character normally has a distinct voice and so does the villain, but like everybody else gets a little bit jumbled sometimes. So I'm going to try that as part of the character profiles as well. But that's going to be in the next vlog because I definitely have spent, excuse me. I had a little hiccup there. I definitely have spent a lot of my day on this and I will need to wind down a little bit from it. But yeah, that is my, those are, those are my ramblings. <laughs> so those are my ramblings of where I'm at. So to summarize, we edited, I edited a few more words. So we edited about 8,000 words, but I've realized I need to backtrack and I need to create Number one is character profiles. I'm like not to toot my own horn, but I think I'm pretty great at world building. So even without like a world building like document, the world building, I got up here. No problem at all. But the characters, that is what that is what needs some work. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'm about to go have dinner before I head out to a boxing class. Um, but really appreciate you turning in for kind of the first vlog on the writing a novel series because it is going to be a series. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday because there should be a vlog up and I guess we'll be doing character profiles. Thanks again for watching and if you have any good character profile templates let me know down in the comments below because I suck at character profiles so please any help would be appreciated. All right thanks everyone. Mwah. Bye!